everybody my name is pulkit chabda and in this video we'll be discussing the problem e called height all the same of code forces round 630 div 2 so without further ado let's get to the problem i'll read it out to you guys uh, the problem says that there's a game in that game a player is given an n cross m matri matrix uh, an n cross m grid initially a ij cubes are stacked up on the cell ij and two cells are called adjacent if they share a side all right and a player can form the following operations the first operation is that stack up one cube in two adjacent cells and the second is stack up two cubes in one cell okay for example uh, as we can see this cube and this cube like this cell and this cell are adjacent to each other so we can either stack uh, two cubes to either of the cells or we can stack one cube each to the uh, adjacent you know cells here is a list illustration okay this is the illustration the player's goal is to make the height of all the cells same okay using above operations Alice however has found that the game uh, that on some starting grids she may never be able to uh, reach the goal no matter what strategy she, she uses thus she is wondering the number of initial grids such that uh, AIJ is between L and R for all IJ and uh, the player can reach the final goal uh, using the above operations. So we basically have to you know uh, calculate the number of grids for which there exists at least one way to you know make all the uh, make heights of all the cells the same. So in each test case okay there's no test case for uh, the input we'll be having n m l and r values n m will be the uh, dimensions of the grid and l r r will be the uh, you know the range in between which the number of cubes can be for each given cell all right so if we see this case 2 to 1 1 the grid is going to be of size 2 cross 2 and we'll just have one possibility of putting you know one in the grid so two cross two grid only one possibility for each uh, cell one 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 so only one possible cell and it is a valid one so answer is going to be one and parallelly for the other case uh, it's going to be a one cross two grid and we have two possibilities uh, either you know put one or two if we uh, you know choose to put one and two simultaneously you can see we'll never be able to reach a state where both the cells have an equal value so the uh, two you know valid uh, grids are going to be one one and two two all right so this point onwards i'll be discussing the solution and you can pause the video think around if you want to i'll just copy the modulo value Okay, I'll just paste it later on. I'll just try to explain with the uh, marker for now. So uh, the first, you know, uh, observation that we need to make here is that we basically need to, uh, you know, make the parity of all the cells same. If we are able to make the parity of all the cells same, then we can basically use this second operation and uh, you know make all the other values to equal to the largest value in the grid by just adding two again and again until we reach that uh, largest value right uh, so basically uh, the target boils down to making the parities of all the cells equal by using the first operation because uh, if we use the second operation the parity does not change we just add two which means odd remains odd and even remains even right so we'll just uh, move and you know analyze the first operation now so uh, we'll just need the parity right it, the answer just depends on the parity of each number and not the actual number itself now uh, what i'm basically trying to claim here is that uh, we can at, at at a given time you know using a using a you know series of operations we can uh, split okay let's say uh, before that let's see what one operation means uh, if we have you know two adjacent cells and the parity of you know this cell was even and this cell was even and splitting their parities uh, you know adding uh, one to both of them means that their parities will be split even will become odd and again even will become odd if the if the case was even and 
odd then it would have become odd and even right because we were, we added one to both of them and the parities will just you know uh, become the opposite of what they were before adding one block now uh, the claim that i was making earlier is that at a given time you know after a several number of operations we can split the parities of any pair of cells uh, in one operation we can split the parities of only adjacent cells but through a series of operations we can you know split the parities of any pair of cells how let me give you an example let's say i have some cells and i want to let's say uh, split the parities of this and uh, any other cell you can choose I'll say this now just see uh, any path between these two cells let's say this path any path you can choose now what I can basically do is first do the operation for these two cells and then these two cells and then these two cells now if we see we would have applied applied the operation one on this cell once and on this cell once but all the other cells that were in the path of these two cells we would have applied the operation twice for this cell also, this cell also we applied it twice one once with this cell and once with uh, this cell and for this cell also we applied the operation twice once with this cell and the other time with this cell so applying the operation twice like uh, splitting the parity twice means that there is no change in parity right so basically the other cells have no change but the cells that i chose uh, have actually you know uh, split their uh, parity they have actually inverted their uh, parity right so basically in uh, uh, after a series of operations i can split uh, i can you know uh, 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 split the parities I can uh, invert the parities of a pair of cells but it's not possible to you know just uh, get a cell and uh, invert its parity because we can't find a way to do it because uh, in, in one move will be uh, you know uh, will have at least two cells involved so and my target is either to convert all the odds to even or all the evens to odd uh, or all the evens to odd right and uh, uh, let's say if the number of evens were odd initially can we say that there's no way to you know uh, convert all the evens to odd because they were odd initially it it, it basically means that there will be at least one uh, even number left in the end uh, which would not be able to be converted to odd so basically we can convert you know uh, the all of the numbers to another parity only if the number of numbers of that particular parity are even so coming on to the conclusion the answer is going to be yes if either the count of odd numbers uh, if either count of odd is even or you know count of even is even when I say count of odd or count of even, I mean the number of odd or even numbers in the grid. Or obviously if both are even, then also uh, the answer is going to be yes, because in that case I can convert any of the parity to the other one. And if only one of them is even, I can uh, you know basically convert that particular parity to, to the other one. But if both of them are odd, then it won't be possible possible to convert either of them to the other one because uh, there will be at least you know one uh, that one uh, cell left which will have no one to pair with, right? So basically, we need to find the number of you know ways of uh, assigning the values to the grid to each cell uh, such that the number of even numbers and the number of odd numbers are not are both not odd simultaneously either one of uh, at least one of them is positive so the uh, method i came up with during the contest uh, was that what i can basically do is i can subtract the number of ways in which i uh, basically total number of ways minus uh, number of ways with both uh, being odd both or being odd means uh, the number of even numbers also odd and the number of odd numbers also odd so the total number of ways are going to be r minus l plus 1 raised to power n into m right this is because for each cell we have basically r minus l plus 1 options 
and we have to choose the number for all cells so r minus l plus 1 times uh, r minus l plus 1 raised to power n into m now uh, let's see what will be the you know value in this case if we see for uh, if, we, if we you know uh, fix a particular number let's say uh, initially let's say x equals to n into m to make things a little easier and uh, let's say we choose that we want a number of blocks to have uh, you know uh, even parity then uh, obviously x minus a are going to be odd right and we want a and x minus a both to be odd uh, a comma x minus a should be odd because in this case we are calculating the number of cases when both of them are odd now uh, what I'm trying to you know conclude here is that if the value of x is odd then this can never be the case uh, the sum of two odd numbers is always going to be even so if n into m is odd then the n both odd is going to be zero because there will be no case uh, when both of them are odd at least one of them has to be uh, you know not it, at least uh, exactly one of them has to be even right now coming on to the case when uh, n into m is even basically x is even let's see when x is even uh, x is even and i said that let's fix the a to be number of uh, evens now a can be either 1 or 3 or 5 and uh, wherever the odd numbers will be less than uh, equals to x so uh, let's see uh, if uh, let me you know write it down i hope you'll understand as soon as i write it down so basically choosing uh, for one i am writing choosing one cell out of x means x e1 right and for that one particular cell i'll i'll have e is to power one options and for the rest uh, cells that is rest x minus 1 cells i'll have o raised to power x minus 1 options right because x minus 1 are the total number of cells that i have to you know choose and o are the number of options for each cell here e and o denote uh, i'm sorry i did not cover that e denotes number of even numbers from l to r and parallelly o denotes odd numbers or numbers right so uh, because we want that one particular cell to have only even numbers so it will have e options for uh, and for that uh, for the remaining x minus 1 we'll have o options plus x c 3 into e raised to power 3 into o, o raised to power x minus 3 right plus you know uh, the five uh, fives cases and uh, the sevens cases and so on right now uh, we'll see how to calculate the value of uh, this total value because if we simply I keep on iterating we won't be able to do it within the time limit because if we see uh, the constraints say that n and n m l and r can be up to 10, 10 raised to power 9 so now we'll basically see how to calculate the sum of the odd you know uh, odd the some of the terms whose you know i value is odd uh, let's see let's see I'll, I'll, I'll make it clear and i'll show it to you guys so to do this uh, i sort of thought of using that uh, binomial theorem in which we say uh, in which we say let's say we had two variables right e and o e and e plus o raised to power n into m let's say x let's say x is going to be x c naught into uh, e zero o x plus x c one e one o x minus one and so on all of all the terms till x c x e zero o x right and parallelly if we uh, write the value of e minus o um, or let's say o minus e o minus e uh, to the power x we'll see that uh, the value is going to be x e naught uh, e 0 o x minus x c 1 e 1 
O x minus one and so on. And basically, in this one, the odd terms, the odd uh, valued, uh, the terms in which the power of e is odd, uh, are going to be negative. So if we subtract this from this, then the uh, terms having odd power of, uh, you know, e are going to double up, and the ones having even power are going to cancel up. These are going to cancel up. And these are going to add to give us the double of the value which we are looking for. Let's say the value that we are looking for is capital X. So e plus o raised to power x small x that is n into m. Let me say n into m now minus o minus e raised to power n into m is going to be two x, and x is going to be uh, this minus this by two, right? So basically, I'll subtract this value from the total number of cases i hope the solution is somewhat clear to you to, to you guys now uh, let's get to the coding part and see how to implement it right i'll just quickly copy the test case okay so the input values are n m l and r i'll just take them as input Okay, now uh, let's calculate the values of O and E, right? Int E, the number of even numbers are going to be uh, R by 2 minus L minus 1 by 2. I basically want the number of uh, numbers divisible by 2, right? The total number of numbers divisible by 2 and that are less than or equal to R, R are going to be R by 2. I'll subject, subtract all those which were less than or equals to L minus 1. So I'll get the count between uh, L and R. Okay. And O is going to be, let's say, uh, int total, int T equals to R minus L plus 1. And O is going to be T minus E, right? Yeah. So as we discussed uh, before that, uh, let me update the uh, modulo value. The modulo value was 9988244353 and we we are given that we do not uh, need the actual answer because it will be very large. We need the actual answer modulo this particular number. So I have this uh, you know function stored already which gives me uh, the power modulo a given number. Uh, modulo mod and it works in log n time you can read about it on the internet it's just basic fast exponentiation that i've used here fast modular exponentiation right so if n into m is odd we already discussed in that case it's not it's not possible for both of uh, you know the even and odd numbers count to be odd simultaneously so my answer is simply going to be uh, power of t and n into m right else if that's not the case uh, my answer is going to be this uh, like total raised to power n into m minus those uh, cases which will have both uh, values as odd basically so let's say uh, <coughs> the you know the cases that to be subtract that are to be subtracted be sub that are going to be uh, e plus o raised to power n into m minus uh, let's say absolute value absolute value of e minus o uh, raised to power n into m right uh, if, if if we passed just you know uh, e minus o instead of absolute value uh, or o minus e then also it would have given the same answer so i just took the absolute value right and now we have to you know multiply it by uh, sorry divide it by 2 dividing it by 2 is equivalent to multiplying it by uh, you know modular inverse of 2 right so yeah before that uh, let's take care of this if we you know take modulo of two of a number and then subtract another number under modulo from it it's possible that the answer that we get uh, becomes negative so to you know correct that uh, because if it becomes negative the answer given uh, becomes wrong uh, some number of time we just add mod to it then we can basically you know take percent equals to mod and now i have to divide it by 2 right that means i'll have to multiply it by modulo inverse of 2 to calculate modulo, modulo inverse of 2 i simply need to do 2 power mod minus 2 
you can also read it how it works uh, on the internet because uh, when the you know uh, when the value of mod is uh, prime basically the thing is that x raised to power minus 1 percent mod is equivalent to x raised to power uh, mod minus 2 percent uh, mod okay and uh, now this the part that is to be sub subtracted is ready ready right and uh, total uh, are going to be power of t comma n into m right and now my answer is going to be total minus sub plus mod to handle that subtraction percent mod right now i can simply print my answer let's see the answer in this particular case it is one and the answer is one all right and for the next case the answer that it says is four but the actual answer should be two okay let me see okay it should be if n uh, into m is odd i just if n into m and one in that case answer is four. yeah it's two i think it is uh, correct now let me submit and i'll walk you through the code once this is the problem E, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me walk you through once. Total is R minus L plus 1. Even is R by 2 minus L minus 1 by 2. And uh, odd are going to be total minus even, right? Now, if N and M, uh, if N into M is odd, it means that uh, there are, there, there is no, not going to be any case when both of the, you know, uh, evens count and odds count is going to be odd because at least one of uh, exactly one of them has to be even for the sum of them to be odd right uh, else if n into m is even then i'll you know basically calculate the total total number of cases and subtract from those the number of cases in which the both of them have uh, odd frequency and basically print the answer to calculate the uh, you know number of numbers number of cases with both odd frequency uh, I already explained you that we can basically subtract e minus uh, power of e minus o comma n into m from e plus o raised to power n into m and divided by 2 right let's see if it yeah it's accepted I hope the solution is clear to you guys even if it's not uh, you can drop a comment wherever you have doubt and I will basically try to clear it as, as soon as possible thank you so much guys see you next see you guys in the next video